We present Highly Strung Hannah by Robert Chantler. This week, the first aid course. Anna, Karen, thanks for coming in. What's wrong? Are we getting the sack? <laughs> no, no. You're going to be the company's first aider for this department. And in keeping with your increase in responsibilities, you will both receive a small increase in salary. Wow. Hey. Am I really the right choice? I mean, I don't do blood or broken bones or any injury at all, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll learn how to on the course. You'll be fine. I did think carefully about sending you, uh, given your highly strung personality, but you are the obvious choice as office manager. Karen will be there to hold your hand, so to speak. I need you both qualified, so when one of you is away, we still have enough cover. Wow. Hey. We've managed fine until now. I know, but it is a new directive from Sir Charles. I mean, it makes sense. What if Margaret suddenly collapsed in the office? What would you do? Get someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Panic! Run away! <laughs> Ring an ambulance? Oh, yeah. Oh, you'll be fine. It's a one-day course. Emergency first aid at work. Wouldn't you like an extra qualification? Yes, and the extra money would come in handy too. Splendid. It's run by a chap called John. From first aid training, I hear he's very good. I want my Tim to come with me. <laughs> well, I suppose if he's willing to go and there's a space and if he's prepared to pray for himself, I don't see why not. What if he won't? He will. <laughs> I'm sure if he knows what's good for him. He does. And when he doesn't, I tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Karen's going too. You won't be on your own. I know, but it's a comfort thing. If Tim won't go, I won't go. Well, let's worry about that when it happens, shall we? I don't want to do a first aid course. I'm busy next week, I can't afford a day off. Please, I can't deal with blood and stuff. So why is Tony sending you? Because I'm the office manager. Oh, right, why am I such a pushover? Because you love your little Hannah, that's why. <laughs> He looks like a right one. <laughs> Just because you have a moustache, it doesn't make you Hitler. <laughs> he might be very nice. Like a Sergeant Major, he is. I've never seen anyone so po-faced in my life. <laughs> Time will tell. And look at the other students. They look a right lot. <laughs> tell, you haven't even met them yet. I don't think I want to. I want need a drink. Please don't get drunk at lunchtime. So, ladies. Tea or coffee? Tea, please. Milk and sugar. Black coffee. Hello. I like you. Go away. <laughs> Is this a cue for the drinks? No, we're autograph hunters. <laughs> There's no need to be sarcastic. There is with people like you around. Oh, Karen, is there anyone here who isn't totally up themselves? So, you must be Hannah and Karen. Yes, I'm Hannah. This is Karen. As you were together, I assumed you were from the same company. So, ready for some blood then? <laughs> Hello. Oh dear, is she all right? <laughs> Will you tell me? <laughs> oh yes, of course. Lie her down and put her legs up. She'll like that. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> Sorry. I think you might have some difficulty with the course if you faint so easily. Unfortunately, it goes with the territory. Are you OK? Oh, yes. I feel a bit silly. 
fainting. Oh, that's all right. Don't worry. I'm glad you two are here. You look normal. The guys are weird. We think so too. Oh, I wouldn't want Mike touching me. I'd rather bleed to death. Let's try and stay together as much as we can. Agreed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's take our seats, shall we? Right, I'm John from First Aid Action. I'm your trainer today. I've been a first aider for years. I was an army medic too. Told you, Sergeant Major. For 11 years. See it all, done it all. Today, I'm going to teach you just enough to be able to cope with an emergency at work. The certificate is valid for three years. Uh, no exam, but you will be observed during the day, and at the end of the day, if I think you're suitable, I will pass. <laughs> I do not take bribes. I do not like people texting while I'm talking. And anyone who does will have their mobile phone rammed up their ass. Clear? Sir! Yes, sir! <laughs> Don't be funny. <laughs> I don't like that either. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Couldn't resist that. Ah, the class comedians, eh? First aid is a serious subject. We must treat it with due reverence, mustn't we? Mustn't we? Yes. <laughs> when I'm speaking, there will be silence. Although, if I make a joke, you may laugh. <laughs> if you wish to ask a question, Raise your hand and wait until I give you permission. If I ask the question of you, I don't just expect an answer. I expect the right answer. <laughs> okay? I have a question. Yes? You're not going to be really bossy, are you? No, just straight down the line. Now... You will be on the floor a lot today. <laughs> Your knees will get used to it. Mine are like rocks. But then I spend a lot of time on my knees. <laughs> <coughs> Do you mind? Sorry. Hannah, behave. Sorry, I'm just nervous. We will be blowing into rubber dolls, tying each other up with bandages, and roll each other around on the floor. Just a normal weekend for Mike, then. <laughs> Tina, please. Well, let's get to know each other first, shall we? Why are you looking at me? You're on the end of the line. So is Mike. But I'm looking at you. Good taste you have. Well, I'm Hannah. I'm an office manager, which is why I'm here. But I was sent, and I had... Anything to do with injury and blood and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really nervous. And when I'm nervous, I compensate sometimes with humour. Or just throw a wobbly. One or the other. Or both. I'll vouch for that. Wobbly is a weeble she is when she loses it. I'm her husband and I'm here for moral support. Right. Welcome. I'm Karen. I'm Hannah's second in command. I'm Tina. I dispatch post for the courier company in Walton. Oh, I'm Mike. And I'm... Uh... Creepy. <laughs> courier. Oh, I'm Scott and I'm a Britty. <laughs> I'm Frank. I'm a lay visitor from my local church. All right, thank you. I hope you all enjoy the course. I refuse to work with anyone other than Tim or Karen or possibly Tina. I won't work with Mike, definitely. He's always got his hands in his pocket and he's weird. <laughs> so, for my part, I love working with sexy ladies. <laughs> Touch me and my Tim will have you on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Metaphorically speaking, of course. Shh, darling, don't put me in that position. I'm not Rambo. You'll always be my Rambo. <laughs> we'll make sure different people work together during the day. Now let's begin by learning how to deal with an incident or accident at work should one arise. Oh dear. Not a real one. Oh good. Sometimes I wonder if I'll ever come across an accident I can't deal with, but it's never happened yet. <laughs> if I ever did, I'll just ring 999 and stay out of the fray. That's what you must do too. Right, thanks for the course. I'll do that. Bye. That is... <laughs> that is not a default position. Minor injuries don't count. You should see her when she's had a few. Men? 
drinks. <laughs> oh, yes. Three vodkas and I'm on all fours. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a bit too much information there. Thank you. Right, now we need someone to make up an accident. Hannah, give me one. <laughs> What's your other chat-up line? I mean, give me an accident. OK, you walk towards me and I'll strip you up. A pretend one. Oh, dear. Um, all right. A man is coming down the stairs when he falls and lands on someone else who's carrying a hot drink. And they go flying and soak someone else who's passing by. Then this woman comes by and sees the chaos and has a panic attack. Uh, you've missed your vocation. You should be writing casualty. Could you sort that out? Well, let's see. What would you do? Four casualties. Well, we'd be joining them if we weren't careful. Well done, Tim. So we assess the situation and decide if we're able to help. Then we make the area safe. Can you get someone else to help you do that? Yes. Common sense, isn't it? Yes, I guess so. You know why I like first aid so much. Why I live and breathe it. <laughs> because you're sad? <laughs> No, because it's all common sense. Everything's logical. Well, how do we choose who to treat first? A, B, C. You know the alphabet, then. <laughs> the A, B, C rule. What's that? Airway, breathing, circulation. If there is a problem with the airway, it must be dealt with first. If it isn't, that person will stop breathing. <laughs> If the airway is fine, we check their breathing. If they're not breathing, they'll have no pulse. So we resuscitate people who aren't breathing. If they are breathing, we check for bleeding and incontinence, and anything else can wait. OK. Well, are they conscious? Why? Well, if they weren't, they'd be worse, wouldn't they? Brilliant! They would. There, you see? Hannah has common sense. Well done. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're such a great teacher. Thank you. <laughs> that was thorough. Did you find any piles up there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> Unconscious people come first. You made up the accident, Hannah, so you decide. They're all conscious. Right. So they must be breathing and have a pulse, then? Correct. Well done. Um, well, it really doesn't matter, then, does it? Oh, yes. Well, I'd probably try and calm the woman down with the panic attack, then I'd deal with the burns, then I'd check out the one who fell and the one he landed on. Mm-hmm. Good. All agree? Yes. yes. The woman with the panic attack is hyperventilating, therefore she has a breathing problem. The lady with the burns needs treatment because the hot liquid will carry on burning her until the clothing is removed or the heat is countered with cold water. We may not want the people involved in the fall to move, but they are alive at least, so they could wait. Now, we'll learn how to treat them later. Right now, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters! <laughs> <laughs> the ambulance services, Hannah. Call me an ambulance. You're an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll die 999. I call you an ambulance. Good. And say what? Hello, can I have an ambulance, please? Yes, and... Um, um, one with blue lights? <laughs> <laughs> they, they all have blue lights. Oh, yes, um, sorry, um, I don't like being put on the spot. All right. Tim? Uh, how many casualties, what their injuries are, and where you are, I guess. Excellent. Well done, Tim. Thanks, darling. Karen, how many casualties are there? Um, five? Four! Listen! Sorry, treat me like a naughty schoolgirl, why don't you? <laughs> don't give me any ideas. Oh, no. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> oh, yes, forgot about him. Four casualties. One fallen, one landed on, one burnt, and one having a panic attack. All conscious... All breathing, all adults. That's concise. Got to be. Especially if you're asking someone else to call for you. Your message must be concise. Uh, by the way, 
Do you know what other numbers you can use to get an ambulance? 118, 118, but they'll charge you 60p a minute. <laughs> I see your wife's wit is contagious, Tim. 911? Good. 112? Well done, Hannah. How did you know that? She read it in her book. Shut up! <laughs> oh, well, in any case, you are correct. 112. 112 is the best choice. Use it. It gets you a signal if your mobile is lost, and with GPS in your phone, your call is transferred directly to the nearest control centre, and your exact location is known. Excellent. And it is free. Right. GPS is fab. I have a computer programme that lets me know where my son is if his mobile's on. Really? Uh, work for MI6 in your spare time? <laughs> no, just being sensible. I know. It was a joke. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hi, Karen. Hi, darling. I was with you at the pub, darling. Uh, oh, yes. I wondered who that was. <laughs> Did we all have a good lunch, then? Yes. Me too. Big lunch. Might have been a mistake. I had a nice lunch at the pub with my Tim. Yes. Well, the first topic for this afternoon is birds. I did have a video clip to play you, but luckily for Hannah, it won't play. Good. You burn yourself when something hot comes into contact with your skin. It could be a liquid, it could be a solid. What sort of burns are there? Friction burns. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, normally that one comes near the end of the list. Don't be so embarrassing. It's bad enough you're drunk. Na 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 na. <laughs> Chemical burns. Good. Electrical burns? Yes. Flash burns? Yes. Very good. A good list there, and there are still others too. Now, how do we treat a burn? It's simple. If your skin is hot, you need to cool it down. Don't you hold it under attack? Usually, yes. For at least ten minutes, maybe longer, and certainly for no less than that time. Now, if you burn certain parts of your body, you have to go to hospital. These parts are the face, hands and feet, and genitals. How would you run those under the attack? <laughs> <laughs> How on earth do you burn your genitals? Hair straighteners. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you realise you said that out loud then? Whoops! <laughs> what? Long story. You could probably get Mike's genitals under a cold tap. <laughs> yes, that's not a very appropriate comment, is it, Tina? I spill coffee in my lap once. I hear that that's the usual cause for genital burns at work. Yes, I understand that it is. It is. I've also done that. When? Last year. Took a mug to the toilets, filled it up and poured water over them again and again. Made a lovely mess. Then I went to hospital, and no fewer than three nurses looked at them that day. <laughs> you never told me that! I never told you I hit my head on a shelf last week. Do I have to tell you everything? Sorry, I suppose not. You're not jealous? No, of course not. I can look at them any time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, moving on. <laughs> not, not that we spend all the time looking at each other's genitals, by the way. Just to make that clear. Now, dressing a burn. The best thing to use is actually cling film. Really? Yes. It must only be placed over the burn loosely, and only when it's cool. But it protects, it moisturises, and it prevents germs getting to the burn as it heals. So it's good stuff. The hospital will probably use fancier things, but for us, it's absolutely fine. Let's move on now to choking. Hannah? I choked once. Oh, did you? Yes, on a chopstick. <laughs> OK. How? I was pretending to be a walrus in a staff canteen. <laughs> you know, using them as tusks. Why? Internet connection was down. I was bored. <laughs> right. Well, I... I won't forget you, Hannah. That's for sure. Even the less charismatic are remembered. Names? No good. Faces? I always remember the faces of the students I've had. 
drunk on a first aid course. <laughs> Disgraceful. <laughs> Have a coffee and sober up before the practical work, for goodness sake. Now, I... You used hair straighteners on her, on your pubic hair? <laughs> Has that only just registered? Uh, sorry, yes, it just came back into my mind. Talk about embarrassing at casualty. The nurses weren't embarrassed. Only because there was a bloke in the next cubicle attached to a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> And so we come to the thrilling denouement, the big topic of the day, and the last. Resuscitation, also known as CPR. I thought that was a football team. <laughs> <laughs> Still ready with the wit, eh, Karen? I'd like to introduce you to Annie. She lives in a suitcase, with her legs over her head, and consequently doesn't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> She is going to be used by you to practice this life-saving technique. She is plastic now, not rubber, so you need not worry about allergies. However, uh, feel free to use the face shield provided. It has a face drawn on it, so there is no doubt as to where it goes. Except on Mike, who talks out of his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Tina! Well, I don't like him. I'm sure he doesn't like you, either. Now, resuscitation does two things. It circulates blood and oxygen on behalf of the heart and puts fresh oxygen into the lungs. We have to do it for the casualty because their heart and lungs are not working. Clear? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to begin, make sure the casualty is not breathing. Then send a colleague for an ambulance and tell them that the casualty is not breathing. Then ask them to come back when they've made the call. Meanwhile, you begin resuscitation. Heel of one hand on breastbone, heel of one other hand on top, Kneel up, arm straight. Depress the chest six centimetres at the rate of 120 beats per minute, 30 times. Like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. <laughs> then you tilt the head back and lift the chin. <laughs> Pinch the nose and blow twice into the mouth, like this. <gasps> <gasps> then continue like this. 30 compressions, two breaths, 30 compressions, two breaths, and so on. Clear? <laughs> Good. I saw one without a face once, in a village hall. Uh, did you? Yes. Looked like one of the Simpsons on speed. <laughs> uh, they are weird without their faces, I'll give you that. Creepy. Now, get into groups. As you can see, there are some limbless annies behind your chairs. So in three groups, two of two and one of three, go to an annie and practice. These ones at the back will be the half-sisters, then. <laughs> <laughs> It's the way you tell them, Karen. <laughs> now, before we finish with some bandaging, are there any questions on resuscitation? Can you blow into the nose too? Not that I'd want to. Good question, Hannah. Yes, you can. I only wondered because I was drinking some tea last week. And when I burped, some of it came out of my nose. <laughs> yes, thank you. Next! Can we use defibrillators? We have one at the labs. In a public place, you can. The United Kingdom Resuscitation Council clearly say so in their guidelines. They're very easy to use. Just switch the machine on and do as it says. It's fully automatic and it only shocks people who need to be shocked. So it's also very safe. And the addition of a defibrillator into a resuscitation scenario greatly increases survival chances. Oh, good, thanks. Now, bandaging. Unwrap your dressings. What you are holding is a dressing. There are small ones, medium ones, large ones, and extra large ones. True, and I've had them all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Karen. Now, this is a medium dressing, most commonly used. Unwrap it to the pad like this, 
place the pad on the wound face down and unwrap the rest of the dressing until the pad is covered and then tie the two ends in a knot on the pad to apply maximum pressure. This makes it stop bleeding quicker. What do you do if you haven't got a dressing? Just ask the casualty to press on the wound and raise the part that is bleeding, or use whatever you have to hand. Right. Volunteer. Thank you, Karen. Round the mouth, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I will show you on Karen now how to do a simple limb dressing. Notice I keep the short end free to tie to the other end at the end. Notice I pull on the dressing as I unroll it because it's stretchy and if I don't pull on it, it will be too loose and to be effective, it must be tight. Ow! <laughs> now, to check it's not too tight, ask the casualty how it feels. See if their skin colour is the same both sides of the dressing. If not, loosen it. Now, your turn. So, we come to the end of the course. Quite a day, and despite the jokes, jibes, and occasional incidents, I will pass you all. Your certificates will be sent to your employers in due course. Tim, uh, yours will go to your home address as you pay for it, I gather. Yes, lovely. Goodbye, Hannah. Bye, John. You know, when I first saw you, I thought you were a po-faced Sergeant Major type. <laughs> and I was right. <laughs> Oh. But it's been fun. Thank you. Oh, uh, thank you. I'll be sure to remember you. Everyone does. <laughs> Come on, Hannah, let's go home and you can tell Mr Tiddles all about it. Yes. See you tomorrow, Han. Yep, see ya. I'm actually glad I came. Me too. Oh, blah. A bit of John's moustache is in my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> In the first day course, you heard Nanny Chumber as Hannah, Robert Chancellor as Tim, Caroline Palmer as Karen, Jeff Buckingham as Tony, Heather Harrison as Tina, Martin Clark as Frank, Ray Pennock as Scott, Mark Hover as Mike, and special guest star Robert A. Hardy as John. Highly Strung Hannah was produced and directed by Robert Chantler, recorded by Martin Clark, and was a free theatre company production. <laughs> <laughs>